everyone, welcome to Mamacita, your weekly mama date where we discuss all things momming while Latina. Hi, I'm Wendy. I'm currently a stay-at-home mom by day and flamenco dancer and writer by night. I live in the suburbs. I'm raising two bicultural children. I'm from El Salvador, but grew up in Los Angeles in a very traditional Latin household. And I'm Alex. I'm a single mom of a fabulous five-year-old girl. I'm an artist, actress, and dancer living in LA. My life is not so traditional. We've been friends for over 13 years, and trust us, figuring out motherhood is way more fun with your fellow mamacitas. Talk to the mic. What are you going to tell me? I'm going to tell you something real quick. This is not for the mic. This is just for VFF Wendy. Mm Mm-hmm. Just. When this whole podcast situation came out, you know how, like, in the beginning of the podcast, I'm like, I'm a single mom, blah, 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 Right. You know that none of my family knew that I was not with Ryan. No, not. I did not know. <laughs> This is the beginning of the episode. What are you talking about? Put your headphones on. <clears throat> Rewind. Okay. Okay, so. I'm going to cry already. Shut up. <laughs> No, I'm serious. When like, no, hold start on. again. This for real. Okay, this we're for doing real. it. January eighth, launch day. I sent this text message out to everybody. Right, friends and family, listen to my podcast. I sent it to like my cousins. I sent it to my sister, my niece, blah blah blah, everyone. And then I realized in the opening of our podcast, I'm like, "Hi, I'm Alex. I'm a single mom." Nobody knew that because I haven't announced that I'm not with my husband anymore you guys know this okay so wait my friends my my circle knows this not even my mom are you serious i'm serious this has been how long now a long time they know that we don't live together okay obviously because of my social media people see that i'm not posting things with him anymore he's not in the pictures he's not really around anymore but nobody really knew officially that we're not together. So do you feel like they're judging you because you're now a single mom? I feel like they're probably thinking, oh, we knew it. We told you so. How does that make you feel? Part of me um, hates it. Part of me doesn't give a shit. Okay. I don't know if so that makes sense. Let's go with <laughs> I, don't I don't give a shit. Makes sense. <laughs> Part of me hates it because I'm like, can I say this on the podcast? What the fuck? Yeah. Follow it up by, I don't give a shit what you think. I'm going to live my life. Good for you. You have to live your truth. <laughs> that's, that's just, I'm not going to say anything. My, my life is my life and I'm not going to explain. I know what's happening with me and nobody else needs to know. So in Spanish, we have the saying, right? It's mejor sola. Que mal acompañada. Yes. So it's better alone than in bad company. And I think... But here's the thing. This is my issue. I feel like, and I'm going to be very um, honest and vulnerable right now. I don't know if this is a Latino thing or just whatever, like general family situation. Like when you break up with somebody or you separate from someone... Your family, like, gets on your side and then, like, team up against this person. I don't want anybody to be against this person. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm not trying to get everyone to be like, oh, we told you so. He's a horrible. Blah, blah, blah. No. No, because you guys don't know. Yeah. You guys yeah. don't know. There's a lot of good. There's a I still, you know what I mean? Like, I still want to defend that. I still want to defend what I had, my reasons for... Being in that relationship, I know all the good parts of this person. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need to hear anybody's opinion. I don't need to hear any of the bad shit that's going to come because that's what I feel like will happen or, or what I will hear if I actually have a conversation with anybody about this. They're going to be like, oh yeah, well, because of this and oh yeah, because of that. No, don't come to me with that. I don't want to hear it. Like, nobody knows what I lived through, the good or the bad. Nobody knows because I'm a very private person and I want to keep it that way. And I don't feel like I need to explain myself to anybody. 
And I don't think you should. <laughs> I mean, on this podcast, we talk all the time about el que dirán, you know, what will people say? And our mothers were such el que dirán people, you know, they no, worried so much about what definitely. Will everybody say. And so for us, like, we don't have to, we're free from that. We don't have to worry about what everybody will say. The people whose opinions I care about, those people know. And that's like you and couple other very close friends who are my family and you guys are my family and you know that and then everybody else yep (laughs) honestly I feel like what we have many people won't understand um and it has its ups and downs and it's had its very traumatic moments very horrible moments right now we're going through a very good moment and Everything is fine. We have our understanding. We know what we are. We're still a family. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but yes, completely. We're a family. Like we still look out for each other, even if we're not together. Nobody else knows what's going on or what the relationship that we have is, but. It, it is what it is and it works for us. A lot of the women in your family are also in similar situations. Oh, yeah. Okay, so hold on. My mother, single mother. My mom's sister. Oh, my God. Okay, I, I'm just thinking like all the comments that we're going to get on the podcast now. Everybody's going to be like, what? She's talking shit about the family. But hold on. <laughs> you don't have to. You can just Whatever. say I have a lot of no. Single moms in my family. Whatever. You know what? My mom, single mom. Her sister, single mom. My sister, single mom. My cousin, single mom. My other... Okay. You know what? I'm going to stop because I don't want to offend anybody. But I haven't really seen like a happily ever after, you know what I mean? Like a marriage that I would want to... Emulate. Yeah. No, not at all. So when you say this... I hear a lot of pain in your voice, and I know that it's because it's very fresh for you. You're going to make me cry. (laughs) No, I'm not trying to make you cry. What I'm trying to get to is that, like, there's no shame in this. There are so many single moms out there that can relate to your story, you know, and it's not a thing of shame. This is a consequence, whatever that may be, whether it's a shitty husband or somebody died or things just didn't work out, you were too young. Um, You know, there's so many factors as to why relationships don't work out. And I feel like there's always a stigma when you're a single mom, like, oh, it's your fault you're a single mom. And it's not. Can we just get over that already? And just instead of judging the single mom, can we support the single mom and create things in society that help the single mother be able to work and mother at the same time? I mean, you know what? Oh my God. (laughs) Okay, I need like a moment. (laughs) So. Not that long ago, I was talking to somebody. (laughs) Oh, shit. Hold on. (laughs) It's okay. Take your time. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make you cry. No, no. Not even for the podcast. No, 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 no. no, no. I I know. No. Yeah. No, I understand. I'm okay with crying. I mean, I cry for everything anyway. (laughs) I feel like when people think single mom, they think it was a mistake. I recently got asked by someone, oh, was your daughter an oops? And I was like, oh, oh my God, not at all. She was planned. I planned to have my daughter because I was in love. Like, this was not an accident. I'm not a single mom because I made a mistake. Not at all. I feel like (laughs) this really needs to be in the podcast for sure. Because I think a lot of moms do get asked this question. Yeah. When you think single mom, it doesn't mean like, oh, this woman made a mistake. Not at all. I was married. I was in love. We planned to have this kid. Because 
in my mind, that was it. That was my life. I was married, and this is what I was going to do with my life. I had no idea that, you know, it was going to go a different way. So, no, she was not an accident at all. Sorry. No, take your time. I'm not going to rush you through this. But, like, okay, hold on. Like, yeah. pause. I'm like, not isn't that, like, this. crazy that, like, he asked me that? I was like, no, what the I fuck? think that's a normal question. Like, she was not a, she was not an accident. People ask me if Halloween was an accident. Oh my god. I'm like, no, she was planned because I was in love. Like I actually was very much in love with my husband. And this is what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. We planned her. We even named her before I got pregnant. Like we knew what name we wanted for yeah. our daughter before we even got pregnant. Like this was totally planned. Mm-hmm. You know what? I think a lot of people ask this question because they see you as a young professional, right? A mamacita, we've been talking about this. Like a woman with lots of aspirations, you're following your dreams, doing all these things. And so I think it's a a natural question to ask. Like, was this plan? I think it was because of the whole career situation, actually, because it is very difficult to have a career, especially the kind of career that I'm working towards um, and having a family or a kid. It's very hard to do both of those well it's hard to be a working mother in general in general no but matter then, <laughs> what job you have but then it'll, if you have a child that needs you and then you have to leave your house or and then especially in a, in a career where you have to like travel or it's very like the hours are crazy like it's not set you know what i mean you have yeah. to be out all night or whatever like it's really hard it definitely is hard it's not impossible there are a lot of no of course not moms who have made it work And that's because moms are magical, right? When there's chaos in the world, moms show up and they make it all better. Yeah. And moms do have a way of making everything work. I have done so many things. Oh, my God. When I moved back from when I was living in Georgia and I started teaching my classes again and all that, and it was just me and Sophia – Oh my God, the things that I did, I think back to so many moments where I'm like, oh my God, getting home, having to carry her in all by myself, like just like so much. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm even living this right now. But then I also like surprised myself with my strength, you know, I'm like, Mm -hmm. it's not like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm living this because I feel bad for myself. It's like, I can't believe I'm living this. And I'm actually doing it. You know what I mean? It's like, and I'm figuring it out. Like I somehow just taught a whole dance class. My kid slept through it. She's in the stroller. I managed to get her into the car without waking her up, pack up the stroller, get home, get her out. You know what I mean? Like this whole situation, like so much has to happen. I'm exhausted, but I did it. And I keep showing up every week. Yep. And doing it over and over again. And you know what? This is a huge lesson that you're teaching your daughter, that you just show up. I Every just, week you show up. I, there, there's it's hard, so many but you times show where I'm up. Like, I cannot believe I'm doing this right now. It's like, you know, the middle of the night or like I'll finish like a show, like I'll finish mm-hmm. something and I'm like, and I have her and I'm like juggling all this shit and I still do it. And somehow it just happens and I get it done because I have to, because what other option is there? There is no other choice. Like you have to do it. Yep. But you know what? Kids are super resilient. And if you can talk to them and explain to them what's going on, they're troopers. They, they go with it. They understand like mama needs to work. Mama's at work right now. Okay. I'm going to sit through the show because mom's doing her job Yeah. and I'm going to fall asleep because it's nighttime, <laughs> you know? And I have so many people around me that are so supportive. And And you're lucky. I'm so lucky. Like all my friends and my students and my coworkers. Oh my God. Let me tell you. (laughs) I've had, um, I've had recording sessions. Like I get called in to work at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night because Mm -hmm. my work, you know, they work all the time, you know, I've literally showed up to work 
with a sleeping child in the stroller. And I've been lucky enough to have people who are like, it's okay. Like, bring her in. We'll lay her down right here. You know what I mean? In the recording booth with you. One of the directors that I worked with took pictures of me. I'll post it on Instagram. <laughs> I'm literally working with her. Like, I'm carrying my daughter and I'm working. My daughter has been to so many recording studios. <laughs> She's been to so many things. And I just, because I have no other choice. Yes, and you're very lucky. You can take your daughter to work, and I know it's hard, but these are lessons that you're teaching her. Moms are amazing. They can get everything done. I'm not saying it's easy on you because it's not. You know, it's, it's a bitch, like having to carry the weight of everything, all the responsibilities. It's, it's not fair. But you're doing it. You know, and every day, and I hate to sound like such a cliche and such a, you know, stupid positive affirmation, but like every day (laughs) that you do this, you make yourself stronger. You teach your daughter that women are amazing and can handle everything. And she's learning this lesson. She knows because you're super mom. Yes. But I feel like I've been accustomed to being so strong that it's so hard for me to be vulnerable or let anybody else into my little bubble. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I'm so defensive and like, like, I don't, I don't know. I'm like scared to let anybody in because I've been so strong. I have to be so strong. Yeah. That it's like anybody else that's like trying to come into my life. I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) No. Mm -mm. So have you dated at all since you've been a single mom? Like, (laughs) hold on. Hold that. Hold that thought. Hold uh, hold that thought. How much do I want to talk about this on the podcast? I don't know. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. Uh, why do I reject everyone who tries to come to me anymore? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> all the single ladies. All the single all ladies. The single ladies. All the single. <laughs> Go away. Don't touch me. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's basically what it is. You know, it's funny. I've seen so many memes on Instagram that are just like what I'm living. Like, oh my God, I'm so lonely. I want love. Ew, don't touch me. Go away. (laughs) That's exactly what it is. (laughs) Anyone that tries to flirt with me, I'm like, ew, why? Who are you? Go away. Leave me alone. How do you meet people? I don't. (laughs) I don't. So what does dating look like when you're a single mom? Well, I mean, the most obvious thing is there is no time. There's no time. It's so difficult. Like, I can't just be like, let's go hang out. Like, people will be like, hey, you want to hang out tonight? Um, well, I can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to, like, plan ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's difficult for people to do. Like, I can't really be spontaneous, which I would love to be, you know? Like, oh, let's go do something tonight right now. What are you doing? You know, but that's not going to work. Have you ever brought anybody home that Sophia no. has met? No. No. What do you feel about that? Like, why? <sighs> Sophia's dad and I have talked about this because obviously we're both going to date eventually. We know that that's going to happen. It's a reality. And we've both said, like, let's not bring anyone around her until we know that it's really something. You know, we don't want to just bring, like, random people around her because that just seems unhealthy. You know what I mean? That's – we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Like, she knows mommy and daddy are mommy and daddy and that's it. We've had these conversations. But here's where it gets difficult for me. Everyone who knows me knows Sophia because – She is my whole life, basically. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always with her. Like, she's just, that's my baby. That's my daughter. Like, if you're going to know me and you're going to love me, you're going to love my daughter. So if you're my friend, you're going to know and at some point hang out with my daughter. Mm -hmm. So it's like, at what point do you separate that? You know what I mean? Because sometimes in my mind, I'm like, oh, I made a new friend. And so this is a friend welcome to my circle. 
without thinking that it may turn into, turn something. into something. But then that kind of violates what we have said about not bringing like a person that we're dating into the mix. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a technicality. Because sometimes like you don't think that it's going to turn into something. Yeah. Sometimes you think like, oh, it's just a friend. And so if it's a friend, then why not bring them around your kid? But then if that turns into something else, then it gets into this like weird, tricky situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't really done that yet, but I've thought about it. Like, oh, maybe we can hang out. Oh, well, maybe not because – because what if it does turn into something, then maybe maybe it's not a good idea. It's weird. So you grew up with a mom who was also a single mom. Did you ever see her date? My parents divorced when I was a baby. I don't know. Like, I think I was like one. I, I never saw them together. And my mom never dated. Ever. Again, after that. Can you imagine that? No, I can't. So I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> Are you sure? Well. Did she have like, quote unquote, friends? Did I you don't ever know. spend the night at your dad's and then she went off and did something and you had no clue because you were a little kid? I mean, I guess it's possible. But I don't think Let's so. Call her. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> My sister and I would ask her sometimes like, hey, why don't you like, I don't know, go out, meet somebody, you know, have a friend, an amigo. <laughs> And she'd be like, I know. Like if it was disgusting or if it was like beneath her, like it was, no, no, no. That's, That's so funny. weird. Yeah, Isn't that weird. weird? Like if it was such a horrible thing to allow yourself to be a woman and have needs and want some companionship and want, you know, to flirt and have fun. Like there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I think she wanted to be a good example for you guys. And she probably... wanted to be like a really, really good mother. Yes. But by doing that, she like shut off this whole side of life. I honestly feel like my mom is lonely and I feel really bad about that. But also it's not my responsibility. It's not my fault. Right. I, she chose not to date. I, yeah, like she could have met somebody and had someone in her life or allowed someone to get close to her, but mm -hmm. she didn't. And so now she's by herself and I'm not judging that, whatever, that's her choice, you know, but. So having just said this, can you relate to that? And are you trying to go against it? Oh, I definitely want to meet somebody. <laughs> of course, of course. I'll tell you this. I would love to meet someone that I could be in a relationship with, but not like a, I don't know what to call it, a domestic partnership. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want somebody like moving into my house. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want somebody to be my family. Like, you don't have to be in my family. Don't mess with my universe of like me and my daughter keep your own place I do my own thing like you have your own life and then we come together just to have fun and hang out and whatever you know but I don't need somebody all up in my business mm -hmm. is that what you really want yes right now I love being just me and my daughter so let's talk about all the positives of being a single mom because this is something oh my god it's wonderful <laughs> Yes. Right? This is not something that just like dramatically happened to you, which happens a lot. You chose this for yourself. You choose this for yourself to a certain extent. I did not choose for my marriage to fail. Obviously. The idea, the plan was to have a happy family, to give my daughter a mom and a dad together. You know what I mean? Like that was, of course, the goal. Mm-hmm. I never planned to be a single mom. I didn't want to. I tried really, really hard not to do that, especially because I grew up around so many single moms and mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. It's funny because I have seen so many single moms and they survive and they make it happen. And I know that single moms are strong and can do it. You know what I mean? That doesn't necessarily mean that I want to do it alone. 
Like, just because I saw it and I know that it's possible doesn't mean that that's what I wanted. I wanted to raise my child with my husband. It just didn't work out that way. Yeah. So it's not it's not like I chose to do this because you're saying like I chose to do this. I mean, yeah, I chose I chose to separate. Yes. Yeah, but so in it, a way, it's a choice. In a way, it's a choice, but it wasn't the plan. Obviously, no. I'm so, not saying anybody plans to well raise children. I'm on their sure. Own. Well, there could be. <sighs> yes, there I'm sure are there are definitely. women. Who go yes. to freaking sperm banks yes. and decide I am going to case. be – That's another episode. Yeah, that's a whole no, other situation. But you know what I'm saying? Like there yeah. are people that are like, I am going to be a parent and I'm going to do this on my own. Mm-hmm. That was not my plan. It was not my plan to be a single mom. It was not an oops. It was not a mistake. My plan was I'm, I'm married. I'm happily married at the time. I am mm-hmm. in love. We are going to make a child and we are going to have a happy family. That's how this started. And then things changed. So it wasn't like this was my choice. I mean, I chose to leave the situation at a certain point because I think it was the best thing to do for all of us, Mm -hmm. especially for my daughter. So yeah, now it's my choice and I love it. And I love it. I'm really happy and I'm really happy how things are working out right now. So tell me about the positives. What do you love about... I... What was it? We had a whole thread... And Jamie was the queen of the her castle. The queen of the castle. No, were the you ruler the queen? of the kingdom. Yes. The, yeah. I love being the only adult in the house. If my house is a mess, then that is my problem. When I want to clean it, then it's great. If we don't go to sleep at a certain time, who's going to say anything? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nobody's going to say shit yeah. because I'm the only adult. Like, I, I rule that kingdom. Yes. Honestly, we do whatever we want, whenever we want. Yes, it's exhausting, but it's also really fun. And I choose this over anything else. Well, there you go. And that's why, yes, I definitely want to date, but I do not want somebody coming into my house telling me how to do things. No, Mm -hmm. like I put things where I want them to be. I do shit the way I want it to be done. Like I... I don't want to deal with anybody else's bullshit. I'm the only adult, and it's wonderful. It's understandable. Here's another thing. I'm not looking to get married again. Okay, well, there you go. That goes on the application. Okay, <laughs> application. I, I'm not looking to get married. I'm not looking to have kids. I am looking for love and care and commitment and, you know, fun. I'm, You're looking for a relationship. I'm looking for a relationship. Be my best friend and let's have fun together and, you know, whatever happens, happens. But, like, I'm not looking for a husband. I'm not looking to be somebody's wife. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. That was with passion. Woo! I'm not looking to be anybody's wife at all. Like, no, 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 no. And I'm not looking to have more kids. I'm good. If I totally fall in love with somebody and like, oh my God, it's amazing, it's whatever, and it's been a long time and who knows what happens, then yeah, I'm not saying I'm totally opposed to it, but I'm not looking for that. I am not looking for a stepdad for my daughter. I'm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like she has her dad. Yeah. He is in her life. Yes, but you're looking for somebody for yourself. You're not I, looking for a dad for Sophia. I'm not looking, looking for, for I'm not for looking for a dad for my kid. I'm not looking for somebody to come and like, you know, freaking rule my kingdom. No. Since oh, we wait, have okay. a platform. Hold okay. on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's okay. make it fun. <laughs> Since we have a platform and you are a hot single mama, mamacita. I am a mamacita. She is. Um, can you describe your perfect person? Oh my god. And if you are all this of person. these things. <laughs> if you are this person, please. <laughs> that Alex describes, please send us a picture. Oh my god. And a two paragraph essay so that I know that you are literate. <laughs> it has to go through Wendy first. Yes. Okay. To Info at mamacitapodcast.com. I'm going to read through all of these two paragraph essays and then I will pass them on to Alex 
If they qualify. If they qualify. And then maybe you will be the lucky man who gets and then to date. Maybe. Maybe I'll text you. <laughs> no, honestly, all jokes aside, I'm very, very picky. Yes. Right now. So let's describe your perfect person so then I can do that whole spiel again. Well, they need to understand me. I'm artistic, mm-hmm. emotional, spiritual, a little bit crazy. You mm-hmm. know that. And they need to be okay with that. Um, I need my space. They need to understand that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Is this not realistic? What? No, I'm just thinking it's like. Shut up. I'm like this, like this, like this, and stay away. <laughs> but I want you to be in my life, but stay away. Oh my God. Give me my space. Acknowledge that I'm like this, but don't come near me. You know what? I think that's the problem. That's basically what's happening in my life right now. It's like, hug me, kiss me, love me, please. But from a distance. I do want, of course, who does not want love? Who does not want connection? Of course, that's what I want. Okay, describe your perfect person. Come on. But that's, I am telling you. Okay. No, you describe nothing. Go. They need to be creative. They need to be artistic. They need to be... They have to have like ambition and be like doing something with their lives. Okay, you know great. What I mean? That's one oh, aspect. Next. But what other aspect is there? They need to be independent. They need to respect my space. They need to have their own lives so that when I am doing my own thing, they don't feel, you know, offended or left out or whatever. Like they... They need to have their own friends. They need to have their own shit going on. It needs to be somebody that inspires me. Awesome. I love that. It needs to be someone that I can be proud of, that I can look up to, financially stable, independent, ambitious. They need to be into like working out and taking care of them of themselves so aka good looking all right you need to be good looking okay you good need looking to, and sexy you need to be good looking and sexy i'm sorry yeah you, you need to be good looking and sexy you do. she's not sorry i'm not sorry she just doesn't want to sound like she's uh you know well that be, girl no, I'm just I, kidding. <laughs> listen i work out i take care of myself i expect the same from the other yep. person okay you need to work out you need to look good take care of yourself be healthy not just look good, but like be healthy, be like active, be strong, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. be strong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> AKA muscular and wax your chest. Ew. And balls. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. That is I all I will reject you. <laughs> oh, where is this podcast going? Oh, okay, hold on. We're wait. making a love Ooh. connection tonight. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to lie about that shit. I have needs. I'm a woman. <laughs> you want to express yourself? <laughs> I need to express myself. Y'all know how I feel about that. It's beautiful. It's awesome. I'm all about it. I have said it. I will say it again. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Y'all don't have to wax anything, okay? Just just be cute. You guys have to read. You guys have to know shit because I'm attracted to people who are smart and like know things. I am attracted to someone who is very knowledgeable, who knows things, who's smart, someone who's very like talented or skilled at Mm -hmm, something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Who cares what they look like or whatever, but that shit is attractive. Teach me something. (laughs) Hold on. Somebody (laughs) said- something sexy. Teach me something. Teach me something. I posted something about sapiosexual and uh, a certain somebody said, tickle my brain. (laughs) (laughs) That was his response to my story. That's a good one. That shit's very attractive. Yes. Come tickle my brain. Thank you. Like, challenge me. I'd rather have someone that's really intellectual and can, like, school me on something Mm -hmm. than someone who's really cute and attractive. And that's it. You know what I mean? It has nothing to say. Yep. Yep. Okay. I totally agree with that. All right. So I mean, uh, you know who I married. So, 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 apply five now. <laughs> paragraph essay about why you should be allowed to date my friend. Five paragraph essay to info at mamacitapodcast.com. Express yourself now. <laughs> she cute, say. guys. She cute. 
on the next episode of Mamacita Valentine's Day. This is a podcast about starting conversations, so share your thoughts. Leave us comments. Send us pictures of your mama date. Mama Cita. Mama date. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Mamacita Podcast. And if you want to talk to us live, look for us on Clubhouse. New episodes out every Friday, so don't forget to subscribe. And if you like what you heard, please give us five stars and leave a review. Thank you for listening. Mamacita Podcast is created, hosted, and produced by Wendy Castellanos Wolf and Alexandra Rosso. Edited by Alexandra Rosso. Our sound engineer is Scott Wolf, and our theme song is based on Drume Negrita, a Cuban lullaby, arranged and recorded by Scott Wolf. Also, check out our Mamacita blog by Wendy Castellanos Wolf. Find that and more at mamacitapodcast.com. Oh, oh my God. You guys I'm are telling horrible. You. What we, are you talking about? Not horrible. That's hilarious. You're in your dirty 30s. Fuck, get laid. We did it.